Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. So I had a look back on the comments of my September video. A lot of you said that you wanted me to go a bit more in depth talking about my EPQ and what an EPQ is and advice for it because I know that I searched for these sorts of videos when I was starting my EPQ and there's a couple but there's not that many and I feel like the EPQ is quite a big thing to undertake and dedicate your time to so you want to be like as informed as possible. And I've got a new little background thing. I've also got a lighting up as well to sort of help the lighting of the videos. So I hope you appreciate that. I don't know, probably not. You're just here to talk about EPQ. In case you have no idea, I'm in year 13. I do English Lit, History and Geography A-levels. And at around, I think it was maybe October time in year 12, we got told about an EPQ. And I had a vague idea, yeah, in case you literally don't know what it is. EPQ stands for Extended Project Qualification. And this is worth half an A-level. So the maximum amount of UCAS points you can get are 28 UCAS points. I think that's if you get an A star. So basically when you apply to uni, this counts as half an A level. It's like an old AS, I guess. Apparently one in five Durham applicants in 2014 did do an EPQ. So I'm not saying that doing an, doing an EPQ is definitely going to get you into Durham or any other university, but like quite a few people do it, especially I would say if you're aiming for university, if you're thinking about doing an apprenticeship, I don't think it's useful at all, ever. I wouldn't even consider it. So yeah, definitely like for uni. I'm not sure about other exam boards. I did AQA, but I don't think they vary too much. So for AQA anyway, there's two options. So you can either write a 5,000 word essay, which is what most people do from what I know. I only know one person who has done the other option and the other option is an artifact plus a thousand words so an artifact it could be like a physical object so a girl in my EPQ class she designed a website and that's how she displayed her information there's a couple of like artifact sort of things you can do I don't really have much knowledge on it because I didn't do it you do have to write a thousand words but literally a thousand words is like nothing compared to five thousand you choose a title so it can either be a question so you can ask why something is the way it is and then research it or I think you can put forward a hypothesis. My question just for reference um, was to what extent is literature written about the Holocaust a true reflection of the events that occurred and how useful is this therefore in today's society? I have that memorised. For reference I have actually done my EPQ. I've finished it. I don't have a grade for it yet though but I've done it. Well, in my school anyway, you get allocated an EPQ supervisor. We used to have fortnightly meetings with her, 80 minute ones in year 12. And then in year 13, it was like a 40 minute meeting with her every week where we discussed the progress of our EPQ all together. So we did lessons about referencing, which I'll go on to later, research, um, like choosing a question, how to not plagiarize. Um, presentation skills, that sort of thing. The way that different sixth forms allow you to do EPQ is quite different actually. So I know that in my sixth form, I think I think you had to be like performing okay. It was kind of like up to the teacher's discretion, I think. At the beginning, I didn't really spend that much time on EPQ, I have to admit. When I was researching and stuff, I'd sort of research like once every two weeks and sit there for about an hour. But to be fair, I worked a lot in year 12. I did about 20 hours a week in year 12. Don't do that. Now I work 12 hours a week. In life, you have to juggle loads of things. So I think one good thing about EPQ is it sort of does teach you about time management it does take up a lot of effort, especially near the deadlines. Trying to do the actual write-up during normal school time is so stressful. Like, I was doing it alongside UCAS, and I also had my English coursework deadline. Got there in the end. We got given deadlines anyway. If you don't get given deadlines, just make some up yourself. But try and stick to them, because I definitely didn't. Like I'd go to my EPQ supervisor and be like, oopsies, I'm 1,500 words less than you wanted me to do. I can get it done by the end of the week. And it's just like, it, it, it was that every week until the deadline. <laughs> you probably got sick of me. But I so wish I would have just done it over summer rather than had it drag on into year 13. Why would you actually want to do EPQ. I've made it sound awful and it actually isn't. There are some really good benefits to it. I think that one of the main incentives and one of the main sort of selling points of EPQ is that some universities actually lower their entry requirements 
months if you've done an EPQ, which is quite exciting. But stupid me did not apply to any of the unis that lower their entry requirements. But anyway, the ones that I found, I don't know if this is 100% correct because I did use the student room for to get these suggestions and we all know the student room is a little bit dodgy. Bristol, Sheffield, Birmingham, Liverpool, Bath and Southampton may lower their entry requirements for EPQ. Do not take that as gospel, I could be wrong, but that's not like an exclusive list because a lot of other unis, um, they've said it could be the difference. So on results day, if you're like a grade under, but you have an EPQ and like an amazing personal statement, then it could sort of allow you to get in, even if you've missed it narrowly. Um, from experience, I've got four offers back and I had an interview at Cambridge and I did put EPQ on my personal statement, but when I was choosing my EPQ topic at the time, I didn't know that I wanted to study geography. My EPQ is very like history, English, media based. I managed to find the geography in the EPQ and somehow like link that into my personal statement. So it kind of worked, but I didn't get any reduced offers apart from Nottingham because I went to the summer school so that wasn't linked to my EPQ. For me personally, it didn't lower them, but then maybe on results day if I do mess up a little bit, maybe EPQ could be a backup. Who knows? If I have to go through clearing, at least like I can be like, oh I have an EPQ. It's nice in a way that I have a little something extra. Like, I think doing EPQ sort of made my other subjects coursework a little bit easier because I have coursework in all three of my A-levels, which is kind of rare now. Although it was really stressful having all four deadlines at the same time, plus a UCAS. So I was like trying to do five things at once. I was all sort of developing the same skill. So it was kind of helpful in that way, I can't lie. So as I said, I chose to do my EPQ on Holocaust literature. So I focused on the Anne Frank Diary, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and Schindler's List. Don't really know why exactly I chose such a dark topic. And I definitely learned a lot. Like speak to subject teachers or if you know anyone that's done EPQ, See, um, I remember Googling like EPQ ideas. Basically, you can do it about anything. They do sort of prefer it to be on the academic side. You do need to have legitimate educational, like academic sources. So you can't exactly get all your sources from the Daily Mail or something. Google Scholar it, that's something that I use all the time. Basically Google search, but it's only academic things that are meant to come up. So it sort of filters out all the rubbish I guess. Well not rubbish because I remember I did use sources from like The Guardian or like other newspapers that aren't technically academic writing. Just search in your topic onto Google Scholar um, and then see what comes up. Once you have decided a topic, a whacker to what extent or how far do you agree at the beginning. I feel like researching is the part of EPQ which takes the longest. I used to copy and paste the links of my favourite articles or if there was any books I'd make sure I made a note of what were my favourite pages and then I'd keep it all in a Word document. In the end, I think I had, I had over 50 sources in the end that I actually, actually used in my EVQ. I know people who only had like 20, but there was just so much that I found and there was so much that I wanted to include. Also make a note of when you access the page because especially if you're using documents from the internet, they can change. So definitely just make a little note of when you got it. For my EPQ, because it was about the Holocaust, when I was speaking to my history teacher, she was like, oh, there's actually a trip, a trip to Auschwitz. It's run by the Holocaust Education Trust. Yeah, it's for A-level students. There's two people from every college that can go pick someone to go with. So I chose my friend Erin, who's also in my history class. It was really heavily subsidized. I think it was only like 60 pounds in the end. It was literally a 24 hour trip. It was super interesting and really invaluable to my EPQ. Before we went to Auschwitz and after, we had to go into London to do these sort of workshops and they actually had a Holocaust survivor there and I actually went over to chat to her and I used some of what she said in my EPQ. I also made contact with the regional manager of the Anne Frank Trust UK. A top tip for your EPQ, grasp any opportunity that you can. I'll just go through a bit of a timeline of when I did my EPQ. So I started researching October, November. I started like properly writing in April, which is a really big gap. I don't actually remember what on earth I did in January, February, March. I know I think I wrote about 3000 words in two weeks. I think, which is really bad time management from me. I think if I would have planned a little bit better, maybe it would have been easier to write because it wouldn't have been such a ramble. Also, while you're doing your EPQ, you also have to fill out a production log, which if you do EPQ, like 
you'll know what I mean. It's this long, long document. Just always keep on top of it. You think, yay, I've finished my EPQ, and then you're like, oh wait, production log. And you literally can't submit your EPQ without your production log. I know people who like lost parts of their EPQ would say keep it on a memory stick, keep it on your laptop, and also upload it to Google Drive. You can just upload documents and stuff to it and then you can access it from anywhere. When I started my EPQ, I had no idea what referencing was. If you write anything that basically isn't a known fact, so say I said this many people were in Auschwitz, if I, if you wouldn't just know that from the top of your head, like if it was a fact that I sort of had to research without just knowing it, then I'd have to reference where I got that fact from. So for example, BBC News. I used the website Cite This For Me, I'll put it here, which was an actual lifesaver. I don't know what I would have done without it. Once I'd actually written the project, which is like the main bit of it, you then have to present it all. So you're like, oh no, you're not done yet. Oh no. You have to actually present what you've done to like people. I was not very good at the presentation. It didn't come at the best week. <laughs> if I did it now, I'd be a lot more calm. I wouldn't be as stressed. So it's a bit of a shame really that I worked so hard and then the presentation didn't go as well as I thought. My teacher said it was fine, but you know when you just know in yourself, like, you weren't that good. I practiced it on FaceTime to my mate um, who had done EPQ, so they gave me a bit of feedback. Um, I practiced it to my friends as well in college. I practiced it to my EPQ supervisor, but it wasn't like the best presentation I've ever given. Oh my God, literally getting flashbacks of how like much I stuttered. It was a mess. So in summary, do I think that doing an EPQ is worth it? Definitely have a look at what universities would like EPQ. But even if like you have fallen in love with universities that don't care as much about EPQ, I think still do it because you're practicing the skills that you're going to need at any university. And then it could on results day help you a little bit. But like 5,000 words does seem really daunting, but then I think everyone that I know went over their 5,000 words. Like you end up getting so, I know this sounds so geeky, but you do get so into your topic and you want to write loads about it. You can get out of the EPQ what you put in. Let me know if you're doing EPQ or if you're thinking about it. And if you have any video suggestions, questions, that sort of thing, then let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you all soon. Bye.